Hi, and welcome to making Prometheus even more open. That is quite the pitch, and there's a variety of different meanings of what open could actually mean. There's lots of definitions, and we'll look at all of those. Open source seems honestly kind of obvious, and honestly kind of is, in particular when it comes to Prometheus. Um, yet, just as a reminder, um, there's more and more players entering this field, and keep in mind that part of what makes Prometheus open is that it is open source. And if you go with other vendors who might not be open source, at least consider what you're doing. So open features, that will be the, the longest part of this talk. We had a lot of new stuff recently. We are opening up deliberately in, in a lot of ways, in a lot of, in a lot of feature ways. Um, we lifted our service discovery moratorium where we had a total of six new service discoveries added recently or over the last half year or so. We added TLS and basic auth to all the things. And we also have a new exporter toolkit, which makes it a lot easier to create and, and synchronize Go exporters. What do I mean by synchronize? Well, if some new functionality comes in, then it's a lot easier if you have all of this and you just vendor it in as opposed to having to do this yourself or someone going to your repo, filing an issue, filing a PR, hey, please do this in depth because that's a new thing. If you base your stuff or migrate your stuff on the exported toolkit, you just get all of this for free. We had a few changes in Promkio. We have things like last overtime, top K overtime. Like if you know that thing where you say top K three uh, of whatever, over a week, you might get 10, 20, 100 different values, which are at some point in time part of the top three. Uh, top K3 over time does what it means or does what it says on the lid. You just get um, the actual top three over that time range. We have the add modifier where you can uh, determine at what specific time and what alignment uh, you would like to have your queries to have. We have negative offset which are hidden behind the feature flag for the simple reason that um, this might break a few assumption of caching front ends. And we obviously don't want to break them. So it's at least for this version, for this major version behind the feature flag. Yet super nice, super useful, try it out. And also we have human durations, which might not seem like a huge thing. Um, and But still it's, it's super nice. You don't have to write this 90M or anything. Uh, you don't have to write 90 times 60 or do the math in your head. You can just write it as such and and it just works. We have a remote write receiver in Prometheus, which is super new and something which historically we absolutely didn't do. We can actually send uh, data into a Prometheus. This is not meant for like super high volume production or anything, but still it enables new use cases. Um, ah, like Prometheus in at the edge or something. I forgot to write that in, but still um, it enables new use cases. Of course, you can just send st uh, stuff from one Prometheus to another uh, without having to go to any long-term storage or such. One of the highlight features is exemplars. Um, it might sound small, but it is actually quite large. Um, here at the end, you see this, uh, trace ID, blah, 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 with a certain value. Um, what that means is you can actually emit information about a trace which falls into that bucket. Um, so if you want to go to a trace for low latency or whatever, you can jump directly to a trace where you know what the mental context is, why it is bad, why it has, you know it has high latency or it had this and that uh, amount of, of HTTP requests or what have you doesn't matter, but you can jump directly to this uh, to this trace and you know precisely that this is interesting for a reason. You have the complete context of all your labels and everything, and you can just uh, move seamlessly uh, between between metrics and traces. Support for this is already in Prometheus Cortex, Thanos, and Grafana, so you can just use it and it's just there. If the trace ID is somewhat familiar or the format, that's no mistake. Of course, uh, in the open metrics format, we specified or we used the uh, W3 tracing specs 
as an example. We didn't specify them because uh, we didn't want to tie the, the standard down because that space is relatively new. So maybe things will change. Um, maybe there will be some other best practices or something. That being said, it is a good standard, uh, what, what WC3 has, um, and it's it's useful and does precisely what we what we need. So obviously we we use it as as the example in in the specs. Um, there's also support for spans, but that didn't fit in in the line. But yeah, you can have spans and traces, kind of obvious. We have a new UI where um, you you now have modern React um, if you want it. There is a super nice uh, editor which has auto completion and snippets and all bells and whistles, and it's really, really nice, and you really should check it. And it has a dark theme for vanity reasons, but it has a dark theme, so try it out. All of this maybe tells you a little bit um, that as historically we were quite conservative with, with things we are deliberately trying to change this. And that's what we mean by, by this aspect of open. Um, because historically, even, even features which were marked as experimental, we basically treated them as stable, which is on the one hand, quite nice for, for someone relying on this behavior. On the other hand, it ties us and it ties the community down. And that's not good long-term. So we are actively breaking this up. A lot of our old assumptions have been revisited and we are enabling more use cases. Like an old assumption would be we had that moratorium on service discovery and we had certain certain thoughts around what we would need to, to see or want to see before we take more service discovery uh, integrations in. Um, but we just dropped them and, and started taking those in. Use cases, uh, more use cases, there are, with the aging thing, uh, for example, there are use cases which are not recommended by Prometheus, plain and simple. Like Prometheus best practice, you should have your metrics endpoint on a distinct port per service. That doesn't really match how a lot of enterprises work with their stuff. Of course, their security teams tend to not like uh, a team coming to them with like, yeah, okay, we might have 30 different ports, maybe 100 different ports. They're not even truly continuous. And they might be open or they might not, and there's no way for you to tell. They tend not to like this. Um, having everything behind one single port makes it a lot easier in, in enterprise scenarios and such. But this is an anti-pattern when it comes to pure Prometheus, yet it is a valid use case for, for certain uh, assumptions, for certain design trade-offs. Um, so we are trying to enable those use cases in a very deliberate and careful manner, yet enable them. Because I would much rather talk about how you can structure this, how you can um, put everything behind one port, and then you have your, your sub string or your path that you say uh, slash SNMP export or slash metrics or what have you. Um, then everyone baking their own and, and people basically um, yeah, not knowing what, what they should be doing as a kind of standard. So opening up to those non-recommended use cases um, is, is a deliberate goal. Agents are another great example, uh, agents themselves, because agents are an anti-pattern in the Prometheus world, like again, pure Prometheus. Yet, um, and for good reason, because you wouldn't want to, you wouldn't want to tie your, your node exporter to your MySQL exporter version. Of course, you might need to upgrade one or the other independently of the other. Um, yet deploying one single binary, ideally already with package configuration and everything, is a plus for, for that kind of model. So again, trying to, to, to carefully and deliberately enable this kind of thing. We are also trying to make our code more modular and easy to reuse, which is Honestly, not a direct benefit to us, like not for Prometheus team. Yet there are projects which which would like to take bits and pieces and just reuse them, make them part of their data pipelines or what have you. So we're trying to make this easier and and more more consistent. Also, um, that's related to the uh, exporter toolkits or exporter toolkit mixins out of the box, um, ideally where we want to have the full scaffold and everything in the exporter toolkit. 
to just entice people to to create more and more mixins and also have more and more mixins as part of at least the um, default and official exporters and and encourage others to also put this in their exporters and their integrations. What are mixins? You might be asking. I should have explained this. Um, mixins are basically a, pack, a, a way to package configuration. So you might have certain dashboards, you might have alerts, you might have recording rules, uh, and you just package them as an opinionated thing, uh, which can be modified. Uh, so it's it's not a a lock in into one specific way of thinking. You can actually modify this. Um, yet you get a, a sane default, something which should work uh, and which you can base upon, which hopefully has a lot of, of synchronization effort, uh, effects through the ecosystem where people start thinking with the same terminology maybe or the same dashboards or they have similar alerts. They have uh, thresholds which are already preset by the domain. Uh, so subject matter expert of whatever program uh, you're running. Just make it easier to, to, to push this kind of information into the ecosystem and reuse this. Another interpretation of open would be open documents. And we have all our design documents open. Um, that is kind of a logical uh, evolution of, of the mailing list discussions. And by and large, we already had our design docs um, public, because uh, why not? Uh, now we are deliberately making an effort to, to make all of them public and actually like follow up if someone forgets to do it and such, uh, that it is not by accident internally Prometheus team, that we just have everything uh, out in the open. We have a special um, drive on, on Google where uh, we can have a public share for, for the complete folder and all of those design docs live in there. So you can quite easily find them and such, which again, is just a logical evolution, yet it is part of this aggressively becoming more open. Another interpretation of open would be open standards. And there are a few. Uh, we have open metrics, which is the standard of how to, how to um, export or expose metrics towards an ingester. And we have a specification for remote write, um, which is how you push the data from uh, your Prometheus server to something else or from your agent to your long-term or what have you. Those two have been spe uh, specified, they're finalized. We are considering doing the same for PromQL and the TSDB, uh, we'll see. Next aspect is open testing. Of course, with, uh, I think it was Oscar Wilde who said that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, and this is quite true. If you look at the CNCF end user survey on observability, um, Prometheus is on place one, Open Metrics is on place five. Uh, five. So um, you can see that there is bound to be a lot of people who want a piece of the cake or just want to be compatible for their user's sake, where they just want to, to work and interact. Um, while a few of them have just taken reference code and such and just re-implemented or even just vendored in our code. Um, that is not the case for everyone. And we want to make this more, more um, yeah, easier for people to actually do. We already have three test suites uh, or compliance suites uh, released, uh, one for PromQL, one for road write, and one for open metrics. Um, there is work being done towards, a, maybe it's already released by the time this, this video is out, uh, a remote read compliance. And we're also considering to do stuff around TSDB and data correctness. And maybe we will also have some baseline performance, like not super aggressive performance, but just some sane baseline to, to give you some reasonable expect, uh, expectation of how, how that thing will perform. Then we have the next interpretation of open, that would be open ratings. And that is kind of fuzzy, that term. Um, I, I know that it, it fit into the open thing, so I, I, yeah. That's a big one. Um, we will have official compatibility testing for Prometheus. Um, this will be backed by CNCF legal and such, so this will actually be watertight, hopefully. Um, we will officially bless and publish those results on Prometheus IO. We will most likely have versioned results where you can say that you're compliant to ProMQL as of April 2021 or what have you. We might also have an umbrella above this 
which uh, which states that you're fully Prometheus compatible or something um, to to basically discern between someone who or a project which wants to be uh, compliant to one aspect of of Prometheus and something which can be in its entirety in its how it's supposed to be used fully compatible with with a Prometheus system. Um, yeah, well, that's still kind of TBD. Um, the other thing which is kind of TBD, but also will most likely work like this, um, that if you have this result for like, for example, 2021-4, um, that this result is, is valid for two or three minor version uh, releases of Prometheus. As we are on a six week cycle um, that comes out at 12 to 18 weeks to just give people some, some um, like vendors and projects should have enough time to actually uh, update their stuff and comply to this thing and we don't want to just drop this on them and and they they need to scramble of course that would be highly unfair um, on the other hand we don't want someone to sit on this for like three years and and their users are running into walls left and right um, having done quite a bit of, of of certification work and such in my past that is a big problem where if you have if you have certifications or stamps of approval or whatever you which are too long running the end users might actually uh, suffer from this so there will be some some middle ground in in quick enough uh, recertification or retesting and we will have some um, some logos some some verbiage some some things which you can put on your website on your whatever uh, to show that you're actually compliant to all of this um, yeah Maybe those details are already published and finalized by the time this video is out. I don't know. We'll find out together during from home. Then we have the next interpretation, open meetings. And basically all our things, dev summits, all the working groups and such uh, is, is all out in the open. It's all uh, public, it's recorded, it's free to join. Um, we have a calendar and we'll be linking those slides and all of those are clickable so you can just uh, you can just click on them and join. Um, we published this on YouTube. We kind of realized um, with with the whole pandemic thing, previously we had one Dev Summit per year um, and that was physical. And we have always invited people and such to, to not be just amongst ourselves, but obviously it doesn't scale to have, I don't know how many people and how dynamic in, in a room when, when you need to actually fly to a place and such. Um, we started having virtual dev summits for pandemic reasons. And then we kind of forgot, I guess, that we could just make them open. Um, so we realized and we did. And again, everything is just open. Um, of course, why not? It's it's on the internet. It's, it's trivial to do this. So that's it. Um, we should have like five minutes uh, potentially for, for questions, which is great. Uh, and I hope you do have a few questions. Thank you very much.